This animation of the rotating planet was made in Premiere Pro, only using a couple of built-in effects and a few keyframes. Although Premiere is not made to render or animate 3D content, you can still do a lot with the built-in effects and create a 3D illusion. So in this tutorial I will show you how you can use a flat map image and then turn this into a rotating planet. You could use this same technique in all kinds of creative ways, like using this for a tidal animation for example. Before we start I want to thank Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. It doesn't matter if you create videos for a living or just for a hobby, you need to know about Envato Elements. And that's because they offer millions of high quality assets for your video projects, all within one single subscription. And this includes stock video, music and sound effects, fonts, video animation templates and much more. I've got my own paid subscription for a couple of years now and I still visit the website multiple times a week for many of my projects. So I can highly recommend you to give it a try, please use the link in the description to check them out and also support my channel. Ok, let's now warp over to Premiere and start some editing. Ok, for this one we're going to use a 1080p sequence which I already created and we're going to use a 2K planet texture map image. I found this free texture map on solarsystemscope.com, I will add a link in the description so you can download them as well and practice along with the tutorial. They offer these free maps in a 2K and the 8K resolution. We're going to use the 2K version for this demo and that's because the effects that we're going to apply are really heavy and can make your system melt, so be warned. Anyway, for this tutorial we're going to use the texture map of Mars. I'll add this one to the timeline on the third track. And I'm using the third track because we're going to add some more layers later on below this one as a background. Let's also extend the duration to about 15 seconds, but of course you can use any duration that you prefer. After that we're going to enable the ellipse tool, which you can find here. Left click in the program monitor and then drag it down to create a circle. And holding the shift key while doing that will give you the perfect circle. Next we're going to head over to the essential graphics panel and hit these two icons to center the circle. And by the way, the height of the circle should not exceed the top and the bottom of the texture map, so something like this is perfect. Next I'll extend the graphics layer on the timeline to match the map texture layer. And now we're going to add some effects to the map texture. In the effects panel we're going to start by searching for the offset effect. Apply this one to the map image and then go for the next one which is the spherize effect. This one should also be applied to the map image and then we're going to add another one which is the lighting effect. And again apply this one to the map image and then search for the track matte key effect. And that's the final effect that we're going to add to the map image. And by the way the order of the effects matters, so be sure to add them in the same order as I did. Next with the map layer selected head over to the effect controls panel and scroll down to the track matte key effect. Then select the matte layer, which is video track number 4, the white circle in this case. And as you can see, based on the matte, now the texture map is only visible at the position of the circle. Next we can scroll up and then go to the offset effect and enable keyframes for shift center. Move the first keyframe with the current position to the beginning. Then change the value up to make it move to the right, or change it down to make it move to the left. And this is important if you want to add the correct rotation to your planet. I'm definitely not an expert on this topic, but I found a video that might be useful in this matter. And as you can see in this video, the angle is also something to take into account, but that's something that we'll fix later on. For now we just need to know, because we're using Mars as a planet, that we need to use counterclockwise. This means that we need to increase the number here, so I'll set this one to 2000 and then move the keyframe to the end of the timeline. And with these two keyframes we've now created this rotation speed. This speed looks fine to me, but of course it still looks very flat, so that's what we're going to fix with the spherize effect. Watch what happens when I increase the radius. Now this flat circle starts to look more like a sphere shape. And I think for this one around 500 will look the best. Next I'm going to play around with the lighting effect. First I'll select the effect which will give me the option to replace the spotlight's position. And then we could modify this spotlight by opening the light one control section. In here we'll increase the intensity to 60. As you can see here this only controls the spotlight. If you want to control the overall ambience light then you need to scroll down and change some settings there. First let's change the light color and then pick the red brown color from the planet. After that I'll set both intensity and exposure to 10. 
Then we need to select the bump layer, which in this case will be the texture map itself, layer 3. As you can see, this adds a lot of texture to the planet. Too much in fact, but we can lower this bump height down to something like 10, and that should give us a more natural relief. And finally, you can switch between rising the darker parts or the lighter parts with this checkbox here. I prefer to have this turned on because it looks more realistic to me. Anyway, all these settings will work for this texture map. You'll just have to play around with the effects to get the best look for your project. Let's now give this a playback and see what we've got so far. For the next step, make sure you've got the texture map selected and head over to the Lumetri color panel. In there, go to the basic correction tab and then lower the exposure, increase contrast and lower the blacks and the whites, until you can barely see the planet, like this. Then move over to the effect controls panel, scroll down to the Lumetri color effect and then click this pen icon to draw a mask. Left click in the program monitor to add mask points and then create a mask that looks something like this. By the way, after this you can still add mask points by holding the control key or the command key on a Mac. After completing the mask, you can increase mask feather like this. And now you've got this shadow look at the opposite side of the spotlight. Now it's time to add a background. This could be an image or a video, whatever you prefer. I've got a 4K background video from Envado Elements. I can now simply drop this onto the first track and then scale it down because it's 4K. Perfect. Next we're going to add some glow behind the planet. I'll do this by using a color mat. In the project panel, click on the new items icon and then select color mat. Accept the default settings and then pick a color that is similar to the planet. Then place this color mat on the second track of the timeline and extend the duration. In the effect controls panel, we can now click on this ellipse mask button to add a mask and then change the shape to a more oval shape in the program monitor. Something like this will do. And also here, increase the mask feather to turn this into a glow. And in this case, I would also lower the opacity to make it a bit more subtle. Remember when I mentioned the planet's angle? That's what we're going to add in the final steps. And to do that, we first need to nest the top two layers. Select them both, then right click on them and select Nest. Then give the nested sequence a name and click OK. Now you can select a nested sequence and then inside the effect controls panel change the rotation value to minus 25 for planet Mars. And in the end this all together will look like this. One final tip before I end this video. You could add the roughen edges effect to the circle. This might make the outside a little smoother. This will add some tiny bumps to the outside, making it look like mountains. Well, that's it for this more advanced than usual Premiere Pro tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, then please like the video, that really helps a lot. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see a follow-up tutorial where I show you how I made the title like this. Anyway, as always, I want to say thanks a lot for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.